There we go. Hey, Eve, I hope you feel better. All right. Um, okay, so ray diagrams. So remember, same three rules as always, right? One beam goes through the center, right? And it doesn't bend, right? So imagine a beam of light leaving the top of my dude's head and going through the center, and then it reflects right back the way that it came from, right? Don't forget to extend it. Extendo reflecto. Everybody good with beam number one? All right, beam number two goes uh, parallel and then through the focal point. Okay, and the order doesn't really matter what each side is right, Jacob. Um, but I think it's better to do the parallel one first when you do lenses. So I just try to always do it that way. So yeah, so beam number two goes parallel and then reflects back through the focal point. Okay, notice you guys that here we're talking about mirrors, right? This is based on reflection. Okay, so my solid lines are all on this side, right? And it's the dotted lines that are on the other side. Follow? All right, and then beam number three is the one that goes through the focal point and then parallel. Good? Oh yeah, thank you. I should have extended it. Everybody good? All right. So my lines cross here. So here's my image. Remember, the feet are always on the line. Okay. So uh, da, 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 real or virtual? Real. Real, because they're solid lines as opposed to dotted. Uh, erect or inverted? Inverted because he's upside down. Cool. All right, and this is all for a converging mirror, right? Everybody good? All right, so to make it diverging, what would I have to do? Either flip the mirror or put the dude on the other side, right? Okay, so let's do one of those. Focal point, center. Our dude. All right. So same three rules, okay? But remember, the beam that goes through the center on this one that works fine, but over here, beam going through the center is a little bit more difficult to do, right? So what do you have to do? Yeah, you got to kind of extend your line, right? So imagine, I mean, you got to line up your ruler with the center and the top of the dude's head, right? So you're going to have your ruler kind of going straight like this. And then your beam goes along the ruler to the mirror and then reflects back the way that it came from. And your extendo is the one that goes through the center. Cool? All right, beam number two goes parallel and then... Focal point. So should I draw a solid line through the focal point? Got it. The solid line goes away from the focal point. The dotted line goes through it. Make sense? We good? Ash, you doing okay back there? Emma, or Anna, sorry, you doing okay? Marge? Okay, go. Beam number three, what do you got? Focal point and then parallel, right? So line up the ruler with the focal point, and it's going to go toward the focal point. It never gets there because the mirror gets in the way, and then it reflects parallel, right? Don't forget your extendo. Ha ha. So here's your little dude. Hello. Oh, I drew him green by accident. Good. All right, these are all in your packet, and you guys have the answer keys. So, um, all right, let's see. Uh, real or virtual? Virtual, because dotted. Erect or inverted? Erect, right? Converging or diverging? Diverging this time, right? Yes. So, are the dotted lines always going to be behind the mirror? Correct. Okay. Yeah, because the idea is the light never goes through the mirror. You're extending to show sort of where your eye thinks it comes from. All right, are we good? Oh, 
okie dokie. So those are mirrors. Um, should we do lenses? Oh, real quick, I guess, just let's make sure you guys understand this. Suppose we, ha suppose I asked you to find the focal point. Somebody asked about this in my first hour. Suppose I asked you how to find the focal point. So suppose I gave you a converging lens or a converging mirror, sorry. And I shine four or five or whatever, some number of parallel beams into this. What are all of those beams going to do, you guys? They're going to cross through the focal point, right? So wherever your focal point is, you don't know unless I label it for you, but they're all going to go through some focal point. So if I draw this beam doing this, that automatically tells me where the other ones go, right? This right back the way it came from, right? And there's your focal point right there. Good? Problems with that? Okay, so that's mirrors. Any questions about the mirror diagrams? Once, twice, sold. All right, uh, should we do the lenses then? All right, so the big difference between mirrors and lenses, I guess two, two big differences. One, the center of a lens is at the literal center, center of the lens, right? Instead of having just a point out here in space, right? Secondly, um, the light doesn't bounce off of a lens, right? It goes through the lens, all right? So actually, you were asking about the solid and dotted lines, right? So with a mirror, all your solid lines are on one side, all your dotted are on the other. That's not true for lenses, OK? So here, what do these dotted lines represent, you guys? Extensions of reflections, right? So with a lens, instead of doing extendo reflecto, we do extendo refracto, right? Okay, you extend the refracted beams, okay? So with that in mind, here we go. So let's start with one of the football-shaped lenses. So there's a football-shaped lens. Is that going to be converging or diverging, you guys? Converging, just because of the shape. All right, remember, the football-shaped ones are converging. All right, so let's draw our dude over here. I know. I'm worried this is not going to fit. So I'm going to squish it a little bit. Remember All right, cool. All right, beam number one goes through the center. Remember, you guys, the center is at the literal center of the lens, right? Beam number one just goes, whoa, that was terrible. Beam number one just goes straight through the center. Good. So incident beam, refracted beam. Remember, you guys, technically there's an extension in this drawing. Why can't we see it? Yeah, it's right under the solid line, right? Like, not under thunder, but like on top of, I guess, maybe, you know? Like, it's, it's on the same line. Cool? All right, that's beam number one. Is everybody good with it? All right, beam number two goes parallel, and here's where people always mess up. So now we got to stop and decide. Is this a converging or a diverging lens? Converging, right? So that means that parallel beams of light will converge through the focal point. Okay. I'm sorry, Mackenzie, you just made us squishy with that. What's he talking about face? Oh, never mind. I got it. You sure? Are you lying so I'll leave you alone? 100%? Yeah. All right. Okay, so everybody's good? So it's going to go this way. Pretend that went through the focal point. Focal point. Good? All right, what did I not do that I should have done? Extendo. Good? All right, and then beam number three, instead of going parallel and then focal, beam number three goes focal then parallel. You got to use the other focal point. Remember, with lenses, with lenses, you'll never use the same focal point twice. Okay. So beam number three is going to go through. Oh, sorry, it's going to go through the focal point and then parallel. Don't forget your extendo. Cool. Any problems? 
All right, so this is a converging lens. Don't forget to draw on your image. So here's the top of the dude's head. Where are his feet? On the line. So there's your dude. So real and virtual, real, erector inverted, inverted. That's the deal. Are we good? Problems, questions? We're good. Okay, so let's do diverging. So your diverging lens, instead of being shaped like a football, your diverging lens is shaped sort of like an hourglass, right? Something like that, right? Okay, so let's do the kind of the exact same thing. Let's put our focal points in, focal points, and let's put our dude over here. And let's draw on our diagram. So one of the three beams will be the same. Which one? Red, blue, or green? Yeah, the center, right? So my center beam is just going to go straight through the center. No big deal. Everybody good? All right, beam number two. Parallel and then focal point, right? But which focal point? Left or right? This time you use the one on the right. Do we see why? Look, you guys, this is a diverging lens. It's going to make parallel beams of light diverge, right? All over. <laughs> They're going to diverge, right? So instead of going together, they go apart. And so it's going to go like this. And my extendo is the one that goes through the focal point. Make sense? Oh, nope. Next beam, instead of going parallel, then focal point goes focal, then parallel. So line up your ruler with the other focal point. Notice you're using the focal point you haven't used yet. That's this one. So aim a beam at that focal point. It won't get there because the lens is in the way. It then bends parallel. And then dot, 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 and it crosses right there. Good. Any questions? Everybody's good? Okie doke. Um, I guess that's it for mirrors and lenses. Make sure you know those ray diagrams. They're all in the packet. Got the answers. Problems? Okie dokie. Snell's Law stuff. So from the packet, from your review packet, I would say make sure that you know numbers 28 through 30. Those are the Snell's Law ones that if you know those three problems, those hit the, the basics and everything. Okay. So maybe before we do those, uh, let me take a quick second and kind of run you through the process, right? We learned that there are three types of Snell's Law problems. Type one is if you're going from a little ni to a big nra, then the light refracts and use Snell's law, right? Option two is if you're going from a big ni to a little nra, then what do you have to do right away? Find your critical angle. And then, If your angle of incidence is less than your critical angle, then it refracts and use Snell's law. But if your angle of incidence is bigger than your critical angle, then what? Good, you get total internal reflection, which basically in English means it doesn't refract. All right, so as you're working through 
these refraction problems, this is your, your little like flow chart. Right? Questions with it? All right, so I told my first hour, if this is overwhelming or you're worried you're not going to be able to memorize it or whatever, here's the deal. Here's your safety net. Okay, if you, if you get to a refraction problem and you have no idea what to do, use Snell's Law. Okay, worst case scenario, you do Snell's Law and your calculator gives you an error. All right, if that happens, if your calculator gives you an error, odds are that means you forgot to find your critical angle. Okay, so if your calculator gives you an error, go back, find your critical angle, the equations are on the board up there is why I'm pointing. Um, and odds are that meant that it was supposed to be total internal reflection. Okay, so. All right. Good? All right, any questions? All right, the one other thing I guess I should caution you on is make sure that as you're reading the problems, you read it carefully um, to decide if the given angle is the angle of incidence or the angle between the, the beam and the boundary. Okay? If I give you the angle between the beam and the boundary, what do you have to do? Subtract it from 90, right? Okay. In all of those equations up there, that angle is the angle off of the normal line, right? So if I give you the angle of the boundary, you've got to subtract from 90. All right? So, any general questions before we do one of these? All right, cool. So, let's do 28A, I guess. My smartboard might actually be cooperating now. Okay, so here we go, 28A. It says a ray of light goes from air to water. So make a little drawing, here's your boundary. We're going from air into water. Everybody, what's N for air? One. One, please make sure you know that. All right, it's the only index of refraction you need to memorize for air, and it's one. All right, N for water, the problem told you was 1.33. It says the light hits the boundary, making an angle of 30 degrees. So that's telling you that the boundary, the angle between the boundary and the beam is 30 degrees. So here's my incoming beam. This little angle down here is 30 degrees. Here's my normal line. So we got to subtract from 90, right? Everybody okay? All right, so here's my angle of incidence, 60 degrees. Without doing any math, there's something else I can put in the drawing. Angle of reflection is going to also be 60, so make sure you draw that in. Angle of reflection is 60 degrees. All right, so there's my setup. So now we just got to solve this. The question wants to know what's it going to do and what are the angles. When well, we know it reflects, so now we just got to decide if it refracts or not. Again, if you're not sure, use Snell's Law. If you don't get an error, you're probably good, okay? Using the flow chart, let's see. Am I going from a big end to a little end or a little end to a big end? Going from little to big, right? One to 1.3. So little to big. Oh, it refracts, right? So use Snell's Law. Good. All right, so let's do it. So n i sine theta i equals n r a sine theta r a. So one times the sine of sixty equals one point three three times the sine of theta r a. The sense I'm getting is that most people are good with the math, but just maybe struggling with sort of when to do what. Is that a fair approximation? Okay, so is everybody okay with how to solve this? Do I need to go through the algebra to solve this mess? You're going to get it down to a decimal equals sine of theta, and then you do inverse sine, right? <coughs> Make sure your calculator's in degrees, by the way. <coughs> All right, so if you solve this, you get 40.6 degrees. Off of the normal line, yep. 
Okay, yep, and your answer will always be off of the normal line, okay, because all, all the thetas in the equations are always off the normal line. Okay? All right, so that's 28A. Are there problems with 28A? Okay, that's a pretty, like, typical problem. You ought to be able to do that. Pretty good. Adam, I didn't say anything when you were sitting over there. You guys, you guys doing okay? Yeah. All right, everybody good up through 28? All right, 28B is the same thing. All right, I'm not going to take time to go through it because it's literally the same type of problem. You're going from a big, a little end to a big end, so find your angle of refraction. Cool? All right, 29. So notice I left this up here. All right, 29 says a ray of light goes from underwater toward the air. So now instead of going from air to water, now we're going from water to air. Why is there an important difference in the way we solve the problem? Look, you guys, in this one we went from air to water. In this new one, now we're going from water to air. So what do I have to do different? And we're going from a big end to a little end, so I need to find the critical angle. Now on, on here, I explicitly asked you to, but you should know to do that because you're going from a big NI to a little NRA. Because the problem says, well, it told you N for water on the sheet, and N for air is always one, and you should know that. All right, are we good? Okay, so part A says one of two things will happen when the light hits the boundary between the water and the air. What are they and what determines which will happen? Well, we're going from a big end to a little end, so there's two things that can happen. If my angle of incidence is less than my critical angle, it'll refract. If my angle of incidence is bigger than the critical angle, it won't, and it just goes through total internal reflection. Oh. No key. So, uh, part B says, so what's the critical angle? Um, where do I want to draw this? I don't have room. Anyway, we'll do it over here. Part B, find the critical angle. Well, critical angle is the inverse sine of NRA over NI. So for us, it's the inverse sine of... 1 over 1.33. And it gives you like 48 degrees or 48.7 degrees or something. Sorry, could I write that too small? You ready for this? Oh, no, it didn't do it. Well, were you ready for nothing? Okay, are we good? All right, so once you found your critical angle, now we can go ahead and do parts C and D. So C, if the light hits the boundary at an angle of 30 degrees, what will it do and why? So, here comes my beam. It's hitting at an angle of 30 degrees, which means that my angle of incidence is 60 degrees, right? So, we're going from a big end to a little end. We already found our critical angle. It's 48 degrees. So what do we got, A or B? B, right? My angle of incidence is bigger than my critical angle, right? 60 is bigger than 48, right? So that means it's total internal reflection. So the light reflects, and you're done. So for 29C, that's it. Hmm? You sure? Yeah. Everybody good, you guys? Okay. Um, and then 29D.
you're still going from water into air, you've still got the same critical angle of 48.7 degrees. So the difference here is now the light hits the boundary at an angle of 60 degrees. So if this is 60 degrees, which means that my angle of incidence is 30 degrees, right? So I know it's going to reflect because it always does. The question is, does it refract? So once again, we're going from a big end to a little end. Uh, we found our critical angle, it was 48 degrees. So now, which one, A or B? A, right? Now my angle of incidence is less than my critical angle, right? Because 30 is less than 48. So what do we do? Do Snell's Law and find your angle of refraction, right? So here we go. Ni sine theta i equals nra sine theta ra. And plug in your numbers. Your Ni is 1.33 times the sine of 30 degrees equals 1 times the sine of theta ra. Algebraify that, and your angle of refraction turns out to be 41.7 degrees. And put it in your drawing. Theta ra, 41.7 degrees. Good. Any questions? Okie dokie. All right, so I think the last one I want to run through real quick is number 30. Um, any problems on 28 or 29, you guys? I think you guys have some studying to do tonight. All right, number 30, uh, it says light strikes the boundary between air and an unknown substance with an incident angle of 40 degrees. The light enters the new substance form, forming an angle of refraction of 30 degrees. All right, did I read that right? Yes. So here we go, we're going from, uh, we're going from air into some sort of mystery substance. We know N for air is one, we don't know N for this. But the problem tells you that your angle of incidence is 40 degrees and your angle of oops, your angle of refraction is 30 degrees. What don't I have in my drawing that I should have probably put in the angle of reflection, right? Okay. Remember, that's not really going to affect the answer, though, right? But it is technically there. Oh, that's not all what I wanted to do. Oh, no. What just happened? Ah! There it is. Why does it hate me? Weird. Damn it. There we go. Argh. All right. Is everybody good the drawing? I'm giving up fighting the technology. All right. So what we're going to do then is we got to find N for this missing substance, right? So you just use Snell's law. Are you kidding me? All right. All right. So just use Snell's law. Ni sine theta i equals nra sine theta ra and plug in your numbers. Ni is 1 times the sine of 40. Nra is what we're looking for times the sine of 30. Cool. And solve. Your NRA turns out to be 1.28. Cool.
Cool, you guys? All right, finally, part B says, what's the speed of light in the, in the medium? So remember, you guys, the only equation that we have that uses the speed of light is this guy. So what does C stand for? Speed of light in a vacuum. Okay, what is it? It's always the same number. 3 times 10 to the 8, right? So, but we're trying to find not C, but V. So, if you algebraify this equation, you get V is C over N. So, for us, speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8. That's a number you should memorize. Over N, which we just found. Type it in. All right, when you do this, your calculator is going to give you 2, 3, 3, and then a bunch of numbers, meters per second. And if you want to just write out the numbers, that's cool. Or you can just write 2.33 times 10 to the 8 meters per second and call it good. Good? All right. Questions, you guys? Okie dokie. Um, those are the main things I wanted to cover. Um, are there other things you guys want me to talk about? And like I said, the emphasis of the test is those two things. Snell's Law, like we just did, and the great agonist. Yeah, For 31 and 32, uh, like when you're finding like, the elements and they want you to find the critical angle, mm -hmm. critical angle, would you find the end first and then plug it in for critical angle? First? Correct. All right, I yeah, so yeah, like so for 31, you're given the speed of light in Royonium. So once you know that, you can use that to find your N, and then yeah, you're exactly right. Um, yeah. What else, you guys? Oh, dokie. Um, I, based on the number of people who did the review, you guys have some studying to do tonight. All right, so. Um, we have a staff meeting after school, so I'm not around after school, but I am here in the morning. If you have last minute questions, I'll be here you know, a little bit after 7. Okay? Okie dokie. I'm going to stop talking at you.